if my voice sounds a little off this episode, it's because I'm dealing with seasonal allergies for the first time in 29 years. Yeah, that sucks. Anyway, as always, welcome to another episode of Where's the Deals, the series where I go online in search of good, bad, and yes, even ugly video game listings. This one admittedly took me a lot longer than usual to make, only because a majority of the listings I was even coming across lately are where people have like a, a stack of games or whatever, and each game has their own individual price, and usually they're asking for like eBay prices for their shit, and I try my best to avoid those listings. They're really not that much fun to talk about whatsoever. So anyway, let's just move on to our first listing of the day. And this one caught me off guard at first until I read the description. It's a Super Smash Bros. reproduction cart for $20. I kind of figured it was fake, Dead giveaway is the coloring on the label seems a bit off. The coloring is a bit dull, which could possibly just be this guy's camera, but Mario's face is very pale looking compared to the real deal that appears a little bit more saturated. Anyway, I always wonder why people might spend $20 on a reproduction cart of something that isn't exactly rare. There's tons of listings on eBay and other sites that sell these carts anywhere from 30 to 60 plus dollars depending on the condition. I mean, worst case scenario, you can just use an emulator off your computer or in some cases your tablet or phone. In a way, it's basically the same thing just without spending any money. I could see possibly purchasing reproduction carts for games that are extremely rare and cost more than like a mortgage payment or something, but it's Smash Brothers. I don't understand the point, honestly. This guy wants 15 bucks a pop for his PS2 games, and I don't really understand why either, considering most of these titles are incredibly cheap and easy to find. Some, in fact, are worth barely even five bucks, like in the case of the SOCOM games and GTA. Then when you look at other games he's offering, I, I don't really think there's even one game that's worth 15 bucks at all, but I, I could be wrong on that. Yeah, fine, he has plenty of great stuff here and even games that are harder to come across like Kessen 2, Black Hawk Down Team Saber, Shaman King, Power of Spirit, and a few others, but even then, they're still cheaper to just buy on eBay if you shop around. This is just one of those listings where I question the thought process of the seller and have to ask myself, okay, why are they wanting such high prices for games like these? When's the last time something like Cool Borders 2001 and Power Dome cost $15? Here's a nice change of pace though. It's a large stack of Xbox games for a dollar to two each. And I bet if you really wanted to purchase all of these games from him, you could probably get it for a cheaper deal since the guy seems like he just wants to get rid of everything. He's got some pretty interesting stuff here. I mean, there's two Mortal Kombat titles, two Sonic games, plenty of Lego titles, and a few others. The two Mortal Kombat games are worth around 20 bucks together and the Sonic ones are worth around 20 to 25 bucks total, so there's definite value in this listing. I wouldn't really pass this one up at all. It's one of those where I could see myself buying everything here and then just selling off my duplicates. I'd for sure make significantly more than what I paid for everything. Hmm. Okay, so here we have an at games Sega Genesis, which is one of those, you know, third party plug and play type consoles with preloaded emulated games installed. And he's also including a multi pack emulator cart with Mega Man X3 for $60. So, a couple things the at games Sega Genesis consoles are notorious for being ungodly awful because of the piss poor emulation. For example, the biggest and most noticeable flaw in the emulation is that the sound and music is off key. So much so that it's distracting in the worst possible way. Here's a clip of what I'm talking about using Sonic as my example.
Second thing is the multi-cart things I'm totally fine with. I have one for my Super Nintendo that is actually pretty great since it has a ton of games on it that I know I will never come across in the wild. That being said, Mega Man X3, that's a funny one because it's not even a real game for the Genesis. It's a bootleg port and a terrible one at that. You see, Mega Man X3 was released for a Sega console, but that was for the Saturn, not the Genesis. I would almost pay 30 bucks just for the games itself and the guy could just keep the damn console. You'd be better off throwing it in a fire at that point. This listing is for a variety of games for only 20 bucks. And right off the bat, I can tell you this one is definitely worth more than what he's asking. Captain Toad is a $15 game on its own nearly covering the entire cost of the listing. What makes it that much better is the other games he's including. Mafia 2 is a $12 game these days, and most of the other games in this listing are worth over five bucks, in some cases worth a little over eight. Very few titles here hold next to no value. I think the cheapest games in here are Battlefield 3 and the sports ones, but regardless of that, there's plenty of great stuff here, and I would not be surprised if this one sells in the next hour or so. Here's a listing that recently sold. It's for a super slim PS3, doesn't exactly mention how many gigs it has, but they are including a small bundle of games for the price of $200. I would have liked to have known the hard drive size personally, but regardless of that, these things typically sell for eh, around like 150 bucks, give or take of course depending on the condition, and if it has all the cords and shit that are included. Does the games make up the rest of what the seller is asking? Well, considering Sly Cooper's collection is a harder to find game that is worth nearly $50, absolutely. Thieves in Time is a $30 plus dollar game, and same goes with that Jack and Daxter collection. Honestly, the only game in this listing that I could live without is All-Star Battle Royal simply because it is not a good game in the slightest. Of course, that's just my opinion, but even then, all the other games in this listing are good or wonderful. A hell of a listing, and I am absolutely not shocked at all that it sold. I'm not exactly sure what to make of this one. The game is not even for sale. You're paying this guy to play Kuon, a game that during the pandemic rose to being worth around $900. He wants you to pay $285 an hour to play this game with him? I don't get it. Why, why would you do this? I mean, I can already tell this dude is hell of a collector and has even more games than I have, but I would never charge anyone to play a game with me. Maybe this dude is like a famous YouTuber, streamer, or, or something, I guess. But even then, why, why, would, why would you do this? That's a lot of fucking money to basically experience a live Let's Play with some dude you've never met. Is it just me? Or is this entire listing and the idea behind it completely ridiculous? For the record, if I know you personally and you wanted to come over to play some game with me, it doesn't even matter what it is. I would never charge you for that. I have way too much of a guilty conscience to do that, but hey, that's just me. You do you. Nothing personal at all. If you make money that way, then I, I don't know, God bless or something? Whatever. Five bucks a pop for PS2 games can either be a good deal or a horrible one. In this particular case, the seller has some good stuff and even games that I rarely ever come across, like Kelly Slater's Pro Surfer, Mad Maestro, and Hurdy Gurdy, the problem is they're really not worth a whole lot. Some of the games, yes, do sell a little more than five bucks, but in the case of like Guitar Hero, Smuggler's Run, Mojo, and a few others, they're worth five bucks or less. I would say unless you can get these games cheaper with bundling, especially since the seller even admits that the games are worn and have some scratches, I wouldn't bother with this listing at all. The games are so common and cheap, you're eventually going to run into them at some point at a thrift store, garage sale, or even your local game store for cheaper than five bucks. I've been seeing more of this recently. 
Facebook ads and ads on eBay, in fact, of people selling off their entire game collections. It's hard to say if this is a case where people are selling off their collections because they are bored of it, or hard pressed for money, or maybe they're just tired of playing games or whatever the case may be. Either way, it seems like right now is one of the best times to sell games. It's really crazy to think about how much the pandemic has fluctuated prices for games, especially harder to find ones and retro ones. Like some games in my collection were worth maybe 40 bucks back then, and now they're worth over 120 plus? This is the first TurboGrafx-16 system I have ever come across on the marketplace. 325 bucks for the system with the controller and cords and a small assortment of games. I had to do my homework on this one a little bit because I have zero knowledge of the TurboGrafx-16. I've maybe seen a TurboGrafx one or two times in the last 30 years. So that goes to show you how hard these systems are for me to find anyway. From what I gather, however, uh, the system in a similar condition to what we are seeing here tends to sell for around 150 to the low 200s mark. I do know offhand, for some reason, that Bonk's Adventure is about a $60 game. The two sports titles are worth around $13 a piece. Double Dungeons game is about 40 bucks and Legendary Axe is the most valuable title being around 70 ish dollars. At the end of the day here, you're really not getting that great of a deal since $325 is close to eBay pricing. Could you talk him down? Yeah, probably, but the guy definitely knows what he has. I mean, the guy's even offering to trade for other incredibly rare stuff like an Atari Jaguar or the Vectrex. Hell, most people these days have no idea what a Vectrex even is. Like I said, this guy definitely knows what he's talking about, so getting a deal off him is going to be probably more difficult than it's worth. So that's going to conclude another Where's the Deals episode, everyone. I thought I would change things up a little bit by throwing in a couple listings that were kind of off the wall, like that Let's Play thing I still don't understand, and the one about the guy selling his entire game collection. I'm probably going to do more of that, to kind of break away from the norm a little so every episode doesn't feel somewhat overly repetitive in what I cover. If you do have ideas for future episodes, please don't hesitate to let me know in the comments. There was a suggestion a little while ago about covering some eBay listings, and I could do that. However, I think I would want to look at nothing but ridiculous and outrageous listings because eBay is really full of them. Anyway, guys, thank you again so much for watching. Take care, and I will see you next time.